Welcome to the Dermastore Podcast. A chat about all things skincare, skin health. And if you're a real skin nerd, we, we hope, hope you'll, you'll join, join the conversation. conversation. Welcome to the ninth episode of the Dermastore Podcast. How's it, Lara? How are you doing? I'm so good, Greg. Thanks. How are you? All good. Thank you. To kick off today's episode, what did you use this morning? Can't wait to tell you what I used this morning. Um, my cleanser was the Mesoesthetic Brightening Foam Cleanser. Love it. And then I actually tried a new product that we're testing from Jorgobe. It's the Multi Filler Peptide Serum, which is really, really lovely on the skin. Um, and then I used a, a new launch for us on Marty Doom. It's the GF Vital, the normal combination skin moisturizer. Ah, cool. Which was just delicious on the skin. And then I finished with a Helio K sunscreen, a tinted one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. What did you use today, Greg? Um, I used, I'm still using the Marty Derm Acne Over Cleanser, loving that. And then I'm actually using pore therapy um, oh. in the morning and the evening. I Just, don't know why I always get surprised by your regime. It's, it's uh, so I, good. It's, I love that product. I mean, it's a cult favorite, but I do tend to get a few blackheads on my sort of T zone. So I've been using that, and it's incredible just in one week what that product can do. That's so good to know. Um, and then I use the Neostrata Vitamin C, the new one, 15%. Great product. Very obviously the same as the Exuvians. I think we chatted about that last time. And then the new Modi Derm sunscreen, the Active D Fluid. So amazing. It's done really well on our launch, hey? I can't believe it. It's just amazing when we launch new brands. I mean, Modi Derm is not that well known in the market. And yeah, just to see that response from an, an emailer, a few social posts, it's really, it really is so warming. And so thank you to all of our customers who support these launches. We we can't do it without you guys. So, And we hope you love the product. I think that's the number one thing for us is that you actually really find value in, in these products we bring to market. The new Antelios UV Moon Mixerol 400 from La Roche Posay is the topic of today's episode. It's a massive step forward in their 30 year history of developing sunscreens. Absolutely. It's taken them about 10 years to formulate this new filter. So, quite excited to talk about it today. Yeah, let's get into it. I mean, this is it's quite a geeky topic. I mean, it's <laughs> but it is very relevant though mm -hmm. because uh, as we know, spending time in the sun in South Africa, we don't use enough sunscreen. There's some some interesting facts here um, that we managed to pull up. Yeah, so they did a recent study where they surveyed about 17,000 people in multiple countries, but South Africa was one of the countries that they included in the study. And it was really quite shocking to see what the statistics were. Like for example, 77% of people do not wear sunscreen every single day. I can believe that. Wow. I mean, so there's a cost factor to it, I suppose, on one end of the spectrum. It's certainly as a country like South Africa, not everyone can afford. Yeah, and I think also an educational factor. Sure. Why am I wearing the sunscreen? Yeah. I'm not sitting on the beach and, yes. you know, enjoying the sun. Yeah. I'm going to the office. And then, actually, 15% of these people did not use sunscreen at all, not even when they go on holiday wow. and sit in the sun. No, I mean, you see those guys walking around with their back of the, <laughs> the back of the necks burnt, you know, oh, and you word. can see you can see they've had a good time in the sun. But oh, and I, I think I am that weird person that would literally go and give them sunscreen because it. You, uh, I suppose just because we know how bad it is to not wear sunscreen or to not protect your skin. Um, and then fifty percent do not think that sunscreen protects them against skin cancer, and. 40% do not think that sunscreen protects them against sunburn. So these are quite high statistics. It's not great. It's mm. <laughs> not a rosy picture. It's really not. So I think, yeah, we do have an important role today. So we've invited Dr. Webster back into the podcast studio, believe it or not. You know, he's not, <laughs> he's not, he's not usually welcome here, but today we've decided he's, he's welcome back again. Hey, Dr. Webster, how are you doing? Uh, good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you. We were, had an event last week uh, in Cape Town with some media and you spoke about 85% um, of your practice or your work and your practice is skin cancers. That's rather shocking. It is. Yeah, it's a majority of my work. I think now at this particular point, I'm being flooded with skin cancer because a lot of people didn't come when they should have come during COVID. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing really nasty skin cancers. And I'm also 
seeing a lot of people that come from overseas, what we call the swallows. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people um, have homes in Spain and then they have homes in South Africa and uh, they spend a lot of time on the golf course or on their yachts. So they never have a winter, but they come and consult me here in South Africa. Do those patients actually, out of interest, wear sunscreen? Varies. A lot of them obviously have got paler skins. Some of them literally do have tanorexia, so they've got sun addiction. So there's a certain percentage that don't. They love lying in the sun and tanning. I think most of them who are the sports people, they're pretty good. But, 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 but they never have a winter. That's the problem. Okay. They go from summer to summer. It's almost like if you don't see the sun often, if you live in a colder climate, when you do see the sun, you like almost go overboard. And exactly. that's where you can really damage your skin. Exactly. And that's where the statistics have shown that the place where malignant melanoma is increasing is actually northern Europe. If you live in Finland or Sweden in long winters, then they go on their holidays to Mallorca or Cape Town or South Africa and they, they fry themselves, you know, and that's where you get malignant melanoma. Because also at the event, we... You spoke about malignant melanoma is an uh, intense burn. Yeah, it's so, so malign malignant melanoma is more related to short, intensive bursts of sun exposure. They've done research in melanoma clinics. So people who have had one or two bad, blistering sunburns in childhood, mm -hmm. there's a higher risk of malignant melanoma. Mm. Okay, so this is a really interesting um, topic. And it's one, one of the things that we found when doing research for today's podcast is the difference between UVA and UVB. So when we're talking about sunburn, that is the UVB ray. That's the UVB. Okay. Yeah. And UVA? UVA is a longer wavelength of light mm -hmm. that does come to the car the glass when you're driving your car. That can cause photo aging mm -hmm. as well as skin cancer. Okay. And hyperpigmentation? Yes, it can also cause hyperpigmentation. Okay. Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. And so UVA is, um, so UVB we discussed burning. So it is that immediate response in the skin. We feel it immediately or a little bit later on. But the, the damage with UVA is you don't see it after a long period of time. Yeah, it's more silent. Okay. It's more silent. Mm. And, it's, and that's it more accumulative damage. So the non-melanoma skin cancers are basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. So that's a sort of an accumulative damage over the years. Mm -hmm. I always say it's as if the, the day you're born, you've got a meter on your head that says naught, naught, naught. And every time you've been out in the sun your whole lifetime, it's an mm -hmm. additive effect. Okay. So it's an accumulative damage that causes uh, the aging of this, premature aging of the skin, skin cancer, and also pigmentation. Okay. Yeah. So this is um, a very good point and uva up until now the longer mm. wavelength hasn't really been covered we haven't been protected in, in sunscreens yeah. yeah and you were speaking about the ozone the other day and how you know i think our environment has just become a lot more volatile and our exposure is a lot more aggressive um and so this uva it's almost impeccable timing how la roche posay have launch this mm. filter at this particular point in time totally i think it's more more needed now than ever especially mm. with climate change and i also i get just to go localize it a little bit more i mean i live in cape town it's a beautiful city but you just see people lying on the beach for hours on end they want to get that instagram photo from the top of lion's head that's great and all but then what are we doing to protect ourselves you know we sp seem to be spending quite a lot more time outdoors i think also with sort of um not everyone has a, a fixed work schedule. A lot mm. of people sort of work more kind of uh, flexi Freelance, hours. Yeah. You know, you want to, so you kind of see this active sort of lifestyle and that's great, but we need to be matching it with proper care. And I think the issue is, and we've spoken about it before, is you don't see the immediate damage. Mm. If the sun feels quite good, but at, actually at the end of the day, it's the older patients you're seeing now. Sure. I'm seeing generally the older patients who two thirds of a total sun exposure is before the age of 20. So I'm seeing people in their 60s or 70s. Mm. And a lot of that damage was done when they were children. Yes. Where the knowledge wasn't there and the products weren't there. And what do they always say, Dr. Webster? I yeah, wish I... I wish I listened to my mother and yeah. put word on that hat. But um, I, unfortunately, I am also seeing younger patients. You know, mm. I saw a 38-year-old gentleman this week with a squamous cell carcinoma right near his eye. It's really scary. And I think the younger generation and the, or younger people, I hope I'm wrong, but I think you are going to see it more just because the sun is more aggressive. Now. Yeah.
And then just to talk about SPF as well, I mean, so I think a misunderstood thing is that SPF is the like, higher the SPF, the better protection. protected you are. But that's really just covering the UVB. Yeah. So the SPF is just uh, how much it protects you from sunburn. Mm. It's, uh, the SPF is not telling you about UVA yeah. or visible light. Or, or other, and U- uh, UVA is almost the silent killer. It is a silent killer. Yeah. And that's the and one that can go through cl- glass, your glass. So UVB is absorbed by glass. Mm-hmm. So if you're driving your car, you're not going to get sunburnt, but that UVA is coming through the window. And there is that famous picture of the American truck driver where yeah. the, the one side of his face has literally been destroyed mm-hmm. by UVA coming through the, the, the glass of his truck. How far into the skin does the UVA ray go? I mean, how sort of... It mm. goes it goes into the deep the deep dermis. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that's the scary part. So that's... And I think people don't understand... So this... I was trying to explain to someone the other day, skin cancer is essentially a mutation of your DNA, of mm. your cells. That's correct. Mm. That's yeah. correct. And it's quite an interesting visual just to think about you, you mutating yourself. When you lie in the sun, you're actually causing this huge abnormality to happen in your body that otherwise wouldn't have happened. So it's a choice. You're, you're choosing to go and mutate yourself. That's it's an really interest- scary. It's thought. an interesting way to put it, though, yeah. and think about it. We don't see it because this is on a cellular level, mm. and you only see it on later on in life. But, I mean, you see some really ugly things. Sure. The malignant melanomas can kill you. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of people think skin cancer can't kill you, but malignant melanoma kills people. And every year I have young patients who die of malignant melanoma. The non-melanoma skin cancers are less likely to kill you, but like the basal cell, the other name for it is rodent ulcer. It like eats a hole in your face. You know, it's like a rat eating a hole in your, yeah. in your nose wow. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So that's on the one um, end of the spectrum, excuse the pun, mm-hmm. um, which is skin cancer. But because this long UVA ray is penetrating, you know, through the epidermis into the dermis, what also lies there with your DNA is our you know collagen elastin all the good tissues that we need and obviously along the way it provokes the melanocyte so we're getting really bad cases of photo aging and hyperpigmentation in your practice too exactly and i think what's being neglected is preventing okay we must prevent people from dying of skin cancer that's obvious and i think that's well known but to prevent aging and that's what often i try and motivate to my younger patients don't like do you want to get do you want to look old when you're 35? Mm. Do you want to wrink deep wrinkles when you're 35? And that is one of the things I try and motivate my patients to wear a sunscreen. But the other thing is to prevent pigmentation, especially in patients with a, with a darker phototype. Mm. Because uh, deep dermal melasma, pigmentation that's been present for a long time is very dis- debilitating. Mm. It affects your quality of life index. And I think not enough time is spent on saying to people, you want to prevent getting pigmentation. Yes. So if you are pregnant or you, you got a, uh, using an uh, estrogen-containing oral contraceptive, use a proper sunscreen. Yeah. Invest in a proper sunscreen. I think skincare brands have really missed the mark, Greg, and something we can look at. Mm. You know, a, a sunscreen has never been advertised as an anti-ager ever, but it is. Of course, it's anti-aging. You know, the most it's an anti-pigment. Uh, most anti-aging. You know, everyone. Is, if you, uh, the first thing you think of with anti-aging retinol. is a retinol or a vitamin yeah. C for hyperpigmentation, but yeah. no one's ever advertised a sunscreen as an anti-ager. Sure. And yeah. so my little sister, she, I nearly fell off my chair when she asked me. She said, "Okay, so basically, I'm 27. I don't need retinol, and I don't need this, this, this. I just need a sunscreen." I'm like. You got it, girl. Yeah. That's exactly it. That is, I'm so, it, it made me so happy. Although 27 a retinol, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't it's not hurt. not hurt. But uh, exactly, so you can start using a sunscreen mm. from, I mean, I just think it's, it's really exciting the way things have evolved and that there's constant innovation and investment in this space. I mean, I grew up surfing, running, you know, doing all the sports. I have accumulated damage. Obviously, a sunscreen is one component with sun protection and obviously sun avoidance where possible is the best thing you can do. 
But in a country like South Africa, it's, it's hard to avoid the sun. And, you know, you want to be active. You want to be out there doing these things. Mm. And today we're very lucky that we have these technologies available that are that are hopefully going to protect us into the future. So, and I think the other side of it is just the formulations. Yeah. I think that is where, you know, again, we spoke about it at this event. Uh, Dr. Webster, you said um, there's no excuse not to use a sunscreen now, really. Um, because the formulations are so good now, mm-hmm. it doesn't doesn't leave a white cast. You know, Anthelios has been very strong on their invisible claims, and we know that. Um, in fact, Invisible Fluid is one of our top selling sunscreens because it can be used by anyone, all yeah. skin types. And then they've got a tinted version of it. And then we've got the the fact that it's water resistant, sweat resistant, sand resistant. It doesn't sting the eyes. So mm. for sports people, that's awesome. So it really does tick all the boxes. It ticks hey? all of the boxes. Wow. So a fabulous innovation mm. from, from La Roche Posay. And, you know, they're certainly a company that just keeps investing in this space. And it's really profound, Dr. Webster. It's something that we were. You know, when we were looking at this new um, Mixerol 400, the new filter, 20 nanometers seems quite small, a small amount. So, you know, the innovation has moved from sunscreens that have been able to protect up to 370 nanometers, so UVA and long UVA. But this is very long UVA, so it's taking us all the way to 400. What was that percentage again? Well, I think 30% of the total UVA rays are in that 380 to 400. So, Which it's, is it's, 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 uh, so although it's uh, only 20 nanometers, it's actually a, l- a large percentage of the uh, UVA rays, you know, 30%. It's amazing. So uh, quite frightening, actually, that up until now, we haven't been protected by that ray. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's probably caused a lot of damage. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So um, also something we're really excited about that we kind of are hoping that this coverage between 380 nanometers and 400 is what's going to maybe be the, the treatment for hyperpigmentation. Mm. I mean, you've been tackling this skin condition for so many years and it's a really difficult one. So Yes, so I mean... The deep dermal melasma, melasma is more horm- hormonal pigmentation mm-hmm. and you get the epidermal form where it's the top layer of the skin and you get the deep dermal form, which is, you can throw everything at it and often you'll just get improvement uh, and often you use the best sunscreens, the best topical treatments, but it, it persists. And I'm hoping that by using this newer filter that that's going to maybe make a breakthrough. Yeah, I can't be sure. They have studies to show that it does reduce pigmentation uh, but i'd like to see it in clinical practice in my clinical practice so certainly i'm going to be recommending this filter yes. this sunscreen with this filter for those stubborn patients with deep dermal melasma and as you mentioned earlier um often it is the patients with the darker phototypes and have high melanin content are the patients that are struggling with hyperpigmentation so it's perfect and like you mentioned greg that it's invisible Mm. you know we have tested it that there is no white cast it's suitable for all skin types i think that just about does it for today's episode thank you so much to dr webster and laura for your efforts and input on this important topic we know a lot goes into these podcast episodes and we actually recorded this at the end of 2022. We just ran out of time on finalizing it. So here we are in 2023, wishing all of you, our amazing customers and listeners, a very, very happy new year. Don't forget to subscribe if you're keen to learn more about what we have to say. We would also really love your thoughts, ideas and any questions you have for future episodes. You can email us on pod at dermastore.co.za.